Hey everyone, welcome to my first game compilation demonstrating a 100% walkthrough with voiceover and all the achievements in the game. I've sectioned it down into acts, but here's a complete guide if you find it more helpful as your one-stop shop for all things Kentucky Route Zero. Hope you enjoy and like this video. If you do, please leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, and let me know what you want to see next. This is your one-stop shop for achievement hunting. And I hope I can be helpful. Enjoy the video. Hi everyone, welcome back to another achievement guide. Today we are going to be doing the first act of Kentucky Route Zero. As you can see, this starts us off in Equus Oils. I believe it's in Oils. I didn't look quick enough. Uh, Equus, well, from what I know of Ark, is a sort of zebra like horse sort of thing as you can see by the head here at the starting gas station uh, this act is going to give us quite a few achievements i'm going to show each of them as we go along i will grab all of them so just please pay attention check it watch my guide and uh, you'll also get an achievement at the very end for completing the act as you will for any other act so as we start here we're going to talk to this attendant you can see that there's an eyeball and a conversation button an eyeball is like inspecting something, so you want to click the conversation button. Uh, and what you'll see that I will do in a lot of these situations, I'm going to start blitzing through the conversations. So you can see I start off a bit slow here. From what I can tell, most of this game, it really doesn't matter what you say. So you, I just spam click. Uh, if you, I've, depending on what you're using, I'm using a mouse, as you can see. Uh, when you hold down the conversation bubble, after talking to someone, it speeds up the conversation, makes it a lot quicker. I feel sort of bad because, you know, the developers do work hard. So I wanted to type a lot of this information. Um, but I just kind of skipped through it because I'm just trying to work on the achievements. So we talked to that gas station guy there. Now we're going to go talk to what he calls the basement people. And you'll see here, this is where I'm just spamming through the conversation. Really doesn't matter what you say. And I'll make sure to point out exactly when it matters what you do say. So they wanted something from us, so we just gotta move over to the left here. And we can see that there's something there. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna turn off your lantern, which I'm gonna do here in a sec. There's just that button there with the light symbol. Now we can grab that glowing game piece that we can, now that we can see it, turn our lantern back on and move, go back over to the basement people. And as you move over, you'll see that you just have to, there's only, the only option is to click the table here. So I just place the 20 sided dice down on the table and they've cleared it out. So now we can move over to the breaker. You'll see that slash symbol. It means it's like a electronic sort of thing that we have to mess with. So we click that and we light everything up. And I thought this was really cool. Now you can see the whole Equus lit up here underground and it's a whole thing. And now it's a lot brighter and nicer outside because we did restore the power. So now we gotta go talk to Joseph again. And he's gonna give us a password for his computer. So we're just gonna go through that conversation. And now we make our way back over to his computer over here. Click the symbol. Uh, you can just pick a password. It really doesn't matter what you do. I just type in a bunch of stuff, but there will be something that we do have to click here. And so you can see these options here. I was spamming, so I accidentally clicked that, so just be careful. But you'll see the options. There was address book, there was games, messages. Click address book and click Marquez, as you can see me do there. And then you'll get a copy of the directions, but I'll show you how to get there and that won't really matter. But what you're going to want to do really quickly is talk to your dog over here. You're going to want to say, how's it going, Homer? How about a treat? Here's some jerky from the gas station attendant. And then it doesn't really matter what you say here. I just kind of click whatever. I was reading through them because I was kind of curious. You can click, click whatever you want after those three things that I did tell you to click. And this will get you your first achievement. I bet a dog will eat it for sharing Joseph's homemade jerky with the dog. Now we're gonna jump into our vehicle. We've got the wheel button here. Anytime you get into a vehicle, I didn't know what this was. Um, so it'll give you an option. It'll say like to move on, 
like has places to go or take a minute to think slow down something like that whenever you're wanting to drive always click the top option it has something to do with continuing on now that we're on the road we can drive wherever you can drive on the main highway the side streets you're just going to take the 65 all the way up to the top here and we'll see the burning tree that we can click on but we want to go just to the left of that which is what i'm i'm just trying to remember where to go if you go over to the left here you see the marquez farmhouse which is the directions we got and now we're at the next location and it'll flip to another scene a lot of the i mean all these acts have different scenes once you've hit those uh different areas those different checkpoints things like that And I probably won't talk constantly. There's really no point uh, that I talk during like dead periods. Like this will be right here. We're just climbing up this giant hill. So I'm just going to keep clicking uh, on the mouse controls. You're just clicking to decide where to go. So sometimes like this, there's nothing really to say as you're just kind of making your way through the level. But you'll see this, this winds back and forth. It goes up and to the left and way up to the right and up to the left. Until you get to the house where it gives you that option to go up into the house. I wish I, I mean, I say I wish I knew more about what's going on. Um, like, I don't really know why we're here, what's going on. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. If you want to do more than just Achievement Hunt, from what I've discovered, or I've come across, I should say, uh, just click Set Up TV here, as you see I'm doing, once you've entered the house. But it, what I've discovered is there's a lot of different things you can do in this game. Like, there's... There's uh, alternate locations to go to, different Easter eggs, different things to see, different conversations. What I'm going to keep showing you is the quickest possible path you can take. And spamming conversations along the way. But there are a lot of cool things to see. Um, but I, I never saw them myself because I wasn't as interested in the storyline or anything like that. I just wanted to flip through it. You'll see during this conversation, I click TV. I'm just having this conversation with them, spamming through the conversation. And you're kind of stuck here watching, as you can see, like a lot of these different things, there'll be checkpoints where um, my mouse is gone, as you might be able to tell. So you, there's nothing to click on. It completely gets rid of your option to click anything. You just kind of kind of have to ride it out and wait for it to play. Now that you can again, go outside, climb back down the hill, and we're going to go right back to our truck and move on. Nice thing, though, is our guy does run. You'll see a bit later on that uh, he doesn't. So he's a little bit quicker, and that's great. Don't have to watch him run run around for a long time. I mean, I don't see why they, you know, maybe they couldn't just put stairs up to the house. Like, just kind of intentionally dragging it on uh, a bit long. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Got to run down the path. And like I said, I was still learning the game a bit. But always click that top option to move on. Now we're going back to Equus Oils. You can see the picture of the Equus right there. So just drive on down and then click on the symbol or the arrow, I should say, to go back. So we're going to get our second achievement of the game here in Act 1, Scene 3. Which I'll show you how to get it here in just a second as we load up. So we're back at the gas We can see this guy standing here next to Joseph. He's what they call the stranger, as it says. So we're going to talk to them. He's this guy that he's got antlers and things like that. And you can see by the dialogue, his name is Carrington. And all we need to do is talk to him. Well, we're going to learn that he's a playwright, which we'll see a bit later as well. Uh, apparently, it'll enable some sort of final interlude later in the game, which I haven't come across yet. But this will get you the achievement, Finding Carrington. 
which is for returning to Equus Oils and finding Carrington there. And now we can move on. We're going to follow uh, the directions. If you want to progress in the storyline, this we just came back here literally for this achievement. So now we have to move on. So we're going to go to the northeast corner of the map. So we're going back to Marquis' house as we can see there. But we're just going to keep on going. Because we're looking for something new. So once you hit this junction here, we can veer off to the right a little bit. And just over here, we'll see on-ramp. And you're, you're going to want to go to this place. And you'll notice in this game, a lot of characters we're going to meet are going to stick with us. They're going to become our companions. So this is, uh, unless you call it classified, maybe the dog or something is the first one. This individual here is going to be our newest companion, our first companion that's going to travel with us. So we're just going to go over to the right and enter to find our next companion. As we load up scene five here. Elkhorn mine. So now we can see this woman standing there. Her name's Shannon. This is going to be the next person that we're going to add to our team. And we're just going to spam through this conversation, get it done quickly. And now that we went to the conversation, Shannon went to the right. So we're just going to follow her into this mine here. And we can see her standing there. We're just going to catch up to her. We use this PA system here that we get the option for. And just spam through. A lot of weird things too. I'm just kind of looking at the conversation as well and picking up bits and pieces and it seems a little bit weird, but you'll see the screen shaking, um, which is what we're looking for. The mind's gonna sort of collapse and that's gonna lead to how we're gonna get out of here. And that was not a very long scene at all. Now we're moving into scene six. And now you can see that we're on some sort of machine that's going to drive to the right, that's going to get us moving. And you'll see that I'm turning off and on the light, as I did there, and I'm going to keep doing it. And it, it seems sort of random, you absolutely do not have to do that. You can leave the light on and just keep moving to the right. But you'll see that it's kind of a longer journey, just moving here to the right, really slowly. Um, so from what I saw online, if you turn off and on the light periodically, it can make an Easter egg happen. It was something that didn't take up any extra time for me, just hitting that button super easy. So I wanted to see what would happen because I didn't know what would happen. I've done it quite a few times already and it has not happened. I'll make sure to point out when something does, but you can see, at least I didn't see anything happening, but I did notice something later on. So we'll come to this turntable. I believe you can keep on moving straight, but if you don't, you can go search different areas. And to get back to the original course that you need to be on, I wanted to show the option here. You have to go to the animal bones and the rowboat. So when we were initially traveling through, uh, you can see 
how I judged it is there's that I can't tell if it's a plant or a rib cage dead center of the screen up in front of us. Uh, that's that's how we know we're on the right track. So we're just gonna get moving. And this is the way out of the cave. And there are other options, other Easter eggs, other things to explore. Maybe maybe not necessarily Easter eggs. That might not be a good word. But it's right around here when I turn this light off. And I'm gonna turn it back on. And I want you to watch the left side of the screen. And you'll see there that a bunch of people just pop up and then disappear. Kind of creepy. I I like like I like doing those sort of Easter egg things, so I kept kept trying it a couple times. You'll see it happen there again super super quickly so that's kind of cool something a little fun then we get to the exit here and you can go ahead and exit but you have to pick this option to let's poke around for a little bit oh sorry let's we're gonna pick let's get out of here and then if you wait for me here i'll just go and have another look and what this does is uh, shannon's gonna start taking off which is important. This is for another achievement. Otherwise, I'm not sure if you could probably, I would imagine, just continue on without doing this. But um, I do a little bit of skipping because I was having a hard time getting this. On at least with a mouse, I found I had to get Shannon pretty far to the right here, as you'll see. And once I get her to the right far enough, you want to get her to face you. You as the player. You want her to get, in, get her to face you as you're going to see right here. And, and I couldn't do that until I got really far to the right here. But what's going to happen is, um, as I still keep trying to figure it out, you see that it was pretty close there for a second, and that was not quite good enough. It's here, where she's straight on, she's looking straight at you, you'll see. weird making weird sounds things like that so i let it do that for a bit and then you can just walk away as i do here and that will get you the achievement hypnagog hip i don't even know how to pronounce that but that's for hypnotizing shannon in the mine and then once you're done that you're just going to head out the right side here and you can see our guy is sort of limping and taking his time. But as we're out of the mine now, here comes Shannon as well. I uh, can quickly talk to her, spam through this conversation. The, what your options are here doesn't really matter. And then we can hop back in the truck. But you notice I like started clicking things here. When I had clicked the truck, I saw that there was a person holding hand symbol. And I was worried that if I didn't click that, it wouldn't work. So I just quickly went ahead and clicked that. Um, but you just need to actually click the steering wheel button and hop in. I didn't know if it would matter with Shannon now, but no, it was just a conversation piece. So now you're going to want to head downwards to Marquez Farm again. The farmhouse. And this is what I mean where, uh, we, if you notice the character was limping as we enter scene 7 here. Uh, he takes forever, it feels like, to walk up this hill. And I mean, it's really... Like, what, 45 seconds or so, maybe? Uh, but no point in watching that. You've seen this part. You've seen him limp up the hill. Or walk up the hill, I should say, the first time. So I just sped this up really quickly. Because, like, look, you can see how slowly he's walking here. And it's a long hill. So here's it's just sped up super quick. 
I maybe could have done a little bit faster, but you can get the point where this is sped up and he's still taking a while. And what we're doing back here is we're going back to that TV that we saw in the house. And it's important that we have Shannon with us as that's what it takes to complete this, this first act. So we're going to enter the house. And now we're going to click on the Shannon button here, which is going to have Shannon fix the TV. And this is going to reveal something to us. Uh, that's not important now, but for the next act. So here we click the TV. And we're right at the end of the act. So after this cutscene plays, you'll get the achievement Act 1, which is simply just as the name suggests for completing Act 1. But here's her fixing the TV. We'll spam through the conversation. And here she's revealing that that is not a barn. That is some sort of secret entrance. That's it for Act 1. Join me in Act 2 and I'll show you what to do from there. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to the next playthrough of Kentucky Route Zero. We're on Act 2 and I'm going to show you how to get the achievements and beat this act. There won't be as many as the last one, we only have 3 achievements total and that includes beating the act. When you start up the game you'll find yourself here, you're with this guy that's limping. And all we need to do is, we're going to rush over to the far left side here. If you haven't watched any of my playthroughs before, like my past one, I would just skip through all the dialogue as quickly as you can. You'll see I clicked the bell there, by the way. Uh, so you'll notice here, I'm just going to quickly rip through the dialogue. Not a lot of it overly matters. And there's a couple that do specifically more so for achievements, and I'll sp specify when that is. So after clicking the bell, the receptionist shows up here as she did there. And I just try to rip through this and spam through it as quickly as I can. Sometimes I slow down and read it a little bit, but and I feel bad. Someone typed a lot of this stuff, as I just mentioned in my last playthrough, and I just kind of ignore it almost. Um, but as you can tell, because I ignore it, I walk away. Well, I don't know if you necessarily had to stay, but I just walk away. And I was kind of messing around here, but then I turned back around because nothing was happening. And as we walk back over here, you can see the receptionist is there. We're going to need to talk to her again. All she was going to do is briefly disappear. I kind of screwed that up. So I come back. We have a little bit more of a conversation. And now she tells me I can use that elevator that we were just at. So we're going to go right back over to the elevator. Limping along because we're hurt and super slow, <laughs> unfortunately. So you're going to go up, press this elevator. And the person with you is going to suggest you go to a specific floor. I believe she suggests the fourth floor. You're going to want to ignore that, though, and go to the first floor, the one just above you. Over there. She suggests the fifth floor, but we're going to the first floor. So that's somewhere where dialogue is going to matter. And on this floor, we're going to get one of our first three achievements. So we're going to talk to someone, and you're going to get options here. And this is where dialogue is going to be very important. You're going to have the option, this is only Conway's dialogue as you can see there. You'll typically get to choose either Conway or Shannon's dialogue. What you're going to have to do is, you're going to have to go receptionist to receptionist. So you can see, or sorry, clerk I should say. Clerk uh, Metstein's over there. And when you get options to talk, you must always choose Conway's dialogue. 
So there's two Conway and a Shannon. We're going to pick Conway. And he's going to tell us we need something. We got to go to the person over here. So we're going to go over to this person. Again, whatever dialogue, make sure you pick Conway's dialogue. And he's going to tell you you need someone else. So then we're going to go to the person in the back. Do the same thing. And I'm just going to speed this up because this is just over and over and over. Um, that we're in a loop. And it takes kind of like a long time, unfortunately. And you can see I've sped it up a lot. But uh, you just have to keep going through this loop if you are achievement hunting. If not, like it's really not necessary. But this is how you do it. So what this achievement is, is we're following the bureaucratic loop in the bureau three times. So one person directs us to one, then the next, then the next. And once you do this, you get the achievement Paperclip Labyrinth. Once you're done doing that, you, like I just did there, you're just going to pick whatever of Shannon's dialogue, cuts through the bureaucratic red tape, and then you're off to the next floor. So now, instead of going to the floor you're supposed to, like before, we're going to go to the second floor. Because all of the achievements that have nothing to do with just beating the act are in this building. Which is kind of nice, knock them out of the park right away. Then the rest of the game we're just going to blitz through uh, the act. So we're on the second floor here. Uh, you can see that there's something going on there. We can just stroll right on by it. That's what we're going to do. Walk to the far right here. And on the far right, you're going to notice that if you go far enough, we're, it's going to show us this guy on the organ. That we're, and we're going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to listen to this guy play the organ music for, organ music for a second. As this is our second achievement in this act, listening to the organ performance in the bureau. And this is the achievement organ performance, as aforementioned. So you're just going to listen to that for a little bit. Um... And you can see he turns around and he actually starts playing the organ now. So that's good. That's what I think is the, probably the key part. And now that we've listened to the organ, you'll see on the option on the left there is the balcony that we can return. Because now we've listened to the organ. I give it a few more seconds than you probably need to just to make absolutely certain I got this achievement. And I was pretty satisfied we've listened to it for a bit now. So then you're just going to go ahead and you'll select balcony on the left there to return which I do here in just a moment after listening to this music for a bit. And there we go. So now we're just heading back to the elevator to do what our what Shannon wanted us to do originally, which was head to the fourth floor. Which is the archives and records floor. So there's her suggestion again, and we're just going to go ahead and follow it. Fourth floor. So once we get to this floor here, we're going to go ahead to the center of this room and look at these documents, as that's our option there. And there's literally nothing for us here. So of all these options, you could sleuth through it if you're interested, but really all you have to do is click put the logbook away as I do there. And that's it. <laughs> Nothing really going on. And we're heading back down. So you'll see Shannon gives us our options list, lets us know where we're going. So we're heading back to the first floor. And here we are, back at that bureaucratic loop area. So now I'm just trying to go ahead and find Lula to talk to her. And it wasn't giving me the option, as you can see there, but now I get the option. We're going to talk to Lula. I just wasn't quite in the right spot. 
and all Lula does is directs us somewhere else again, some more of a bureaucratic loop, essentially. And we're just going to head down to the ground floor to talk to Mary Ann, who was the initial receptionist, once we showed up at this building. And that's the lobby, so we're going to head down to the lobby. And I, and I just won't talk constantly throughout this video. Like at this point, we're just waiting until we walk over to the lobby. I'm just showing you where I go, what I do. So there's not a lot for me to say at this moment. So I'll just kind of stay quiet. So now we're talking to Mary Ann over here at the front desk. And I'm just going to cut through this dialogue, but she's essentially giving us directions. So we can go back to the truck and press the wheel on the truck to get into the truck to drive. And as I mentioned in my last video videos, I get two options on the truck. The top one is to immediately start driving and go. The bottom one is for nothing to happen for you to stay in that spot. So just click the top option, which in this case is back, get back in the truck, but it always changes up. So now that we're on this highway, you don't want to drive clockwise. So you'll see, I start clicking here and I had, and I was going the wrong direction for a second. So I switched directions and this direction is clockwise and we're going to go in this direction until we find the crystal, which is right there. And then we're going to take route 8192 from what I've, from what I've gathered. And then you're going to want to drive counterclockwise. So we're going to go back in the opposite direction until we find the self storage. And there it is, easy peasy. So now we're moving into scene two, moving right along in this act. So we're just going to go over and talk to Brandon, who is the janitor over here on the far right. I was looking at Shannon for a second, about to talk to her, but it is, I do quickly just to um, check in with her and get that dialogue over, but then we're going to run over to Brandon here. And... We're just going to talk to him a little bit, lots of dialogue, and we're just talking to him, keep him busy, while, as you can see here, Shannon says she's going to go, so you just wait. So I'm just going to spam through a bunch of this dialogue while we're waiting on Shannon to go and do her thing and come back. So now Shannon's back, so we can go ahead and click that exit button and leave the storage shed area. Self-storage, I should say. And you can see from a bit of dialogue here, our leg's getting really screwed up, so we're going to have to figure that out. Um, as we tried to leave, it kind of stopped us from leaving. So this is where we've decided we need to go to a doctor, which is what's going to happen in this game. So now it actually does let us leave. And now that we're back on this highway, we just need to retrace our steps to get back to the Bureau. So in this case, we're moving left along this bottom path, which is count, which is clockwise, sorry. Until we find the crystal. So I click on the crystal and select that highway, which would take us back to our original highway, Highway 65. Then we're going down to the left, which is counterclockwise, until we find the Bureau again. <coughs> and this will bring us to scene three of Act Two.
So now I'm going to go back over to Marianne at the receptionist desk. And you'll see Carrington that you should recognize if you achievement hunted in the first act. Who was at the Equus Oils like, gas station area. And basically he's looking for a place for his play. I didn't really know what to click so I actually just selected gas station because I know what that is in case it came up later. Which I haven't noticed. I don't think it does. I haven't seen it come up later. And then we're just going right over and talking to Marianne. So essentially what it comes down to is I believe we're looking for someone they're not there and we're in the point where we're going to need a doctor for the leg so we're going to move right along back to the highway. So we've been going northeast a lot um, up that way towards the highway so we're actually going to go the opposite way. We're going to go down uh, southwest. And just a little bit past the Equus Oils here. Where that play is now going to happen. We're just going to go to the left here. Once you see that there, that symbol, it's a good indication. And we'll find Dr. Truman's house. So I had clicked on that. But what we're looking for is that museum right there. Now that we're at the museum, this is kind of a op more open area than what we've seen a little bit so far. Um, so just take a look at where I'm going to go and w which direction I take. But essentially we're going down and to the right. And I try to go straight down because it, it's sort of that direction, but you can see it, like I'm clicking here and it doesn't really let me go that way. And so we're just going to go down to the right as best we can. And so you see this, you'll see the camera changing here a little bit. And you'll see this, this lit up part here. Um, I kind of walked around a little bit, but you're just actually going down to the right more. As you can see me walking away from it. Once you've hit this, the red uh, lift here, that's a good sign. Because then we're going to walk into this elevator here and this will bring us farther in the level. And you can see our dogs uh, really slowly falling behind here. That kind of sucks for this next part is you're literally stuck waiting on the dog. Um, it's kind of slow as it is but the dog really does slow you down that much more. But dog's man's best friend so we're going to wait on him. We appreciate them. So now that we're on the rooftop, it's raining. You'll have that umbrella option in the bottom middle. I just clicked it because, I mean, it's raining, so why not pull out the umbrella? I can't imagine it's... I wouldn't think it's absolutely necessary. Like, I don't think you're going to die or something. Or lose any sort of progress just because you can pull out an umbrella in a rainstorm. Um... So I, I just pulled it out, because why not? And we're going to make our way to the far right. You can see the dog in the bottom left just there, and he's just exiting the screen now. So with the distance we're, we're walking, you'll see what I mean, that the dog is super slow. We've got to wait for him to catch up. I thought my game was, like, stuck or something in this next part. I had no idea why it wasn't progressing, but that's the reason. That dog right there. So we'll finally we get to Ezra here that we're going to talk to. Honestly, take your time to read this conversation a little bit. I didn't. But otherwise, you're going to be waiting on the dog, and you'll see what I mean in a second. I mean, the dog probably should run up by now if you read all of that, I would think. So maybe skim some parts of it, but... um, Yeah, we're just talking to Ezra here to get picked up by a bird, and we're going to fly for this next part. We're just waiting on the dog. But as a disclaimer, while we're waiting on the dog who's coming in now, what I want to say is pay close attention to this next part. I uh, I found this next part kind of confusing as to where you're going. Like there's uh, there's a lot of directions, 
I, maybe if I read it, it would have explained it a lot better, but I didn't, so this is, uh, this is what I did. I mean, I'll cut out bits and parts, like, it took me a while to figure out what I was doing, so I'll just show you. So, starting from the museum here, look at the bottom left at the compass, and you'll see northeast, which when I'm right here is down and to the right. Not up and to the right, like you might think, so make sure you pay attention to that compass. We're following along the Green River here, as you can see in the bottom middle. Um, and I hit Nolan River Lake, but that's not the direction we're going. We want to go down this way, which is more pretty much east now, is where we're heading. Passing the small figure and going across Highway 65. Uh, you'll he see Elkhorn 9 here on your on the bird's right, our left. That's a good sign, means you're in the right direction. And you'll see this fork in the road here. Um, that one's a dead end. You don't want to go that way. So I just follow along this way. And this is Green River Lake, which is a good sign that we're on the right track. So just keep on pursuing. But what you want to do is, instead of going down that way like I was about to do, uh, you want to switch gears and uh, kind of go over to that water. And you'll see the cameras rotating, and we're now heading southeast to this really giant lake that's Lake Cumberland. Uh, once you hit the lake, take a left here, as I'm about to do, which will head us more east. Um, almost northeast, but no, pretty much east. And you'll see this patch of what looks like grass or something. That's the forest. That's the next part we're heading to. Like I said, the directions aren't super great uh, it's a bit confusing but if you follow that along hopefully that should make sense and not be too hard to follow and this will put us into act five which is right around the closing of the act so what you're gonna do is you're gonna run to the far right here i'm not sure how much dialogue was really necessary but it's quite really easy just to like fly through the dialogue and not pick anything specific so that's what i do here I talked to the bird because they brought us, or, well, Conway, at the bird, because they were uh, an important part of us getting here. And I was uh, just looking around, but there's nothing else, so we're going to head to the far right. And it doesn't really, like, I mean, it doesn't show you that you're kind of on a path, but you're just going to keep going to the right. There'll be a few people stopping along the way, and I think you can just skip through them all. Because it's the person at the end that's really important. But I did talk to people along the way, just in case. But like you can see there, it's super quick. Like, there's not a lot to say. Really doesn't hold you up that much. Same with these people here, just I had another quick conversation. So we're just still making our way to the far right. And this is the important part. They'll say he's inside, Dr. Truman. This is the doctor we're looking for. So that's the important part. Click on her. Talk to her. And you'll find the doctor here. And we're just going to quickly talk to the doctor. And this is our last point in the game. I just kind of skipped through that conversation. And this is wrapping up Act 2. Which will get you the achievement... Act 2, much like the Act 1 title, not, I want to say not overly original, like not like something weird, different, nothing to describe the game, just a pretty bland title, Act 2, which is, as it's, as it's said in the title basically, that's for completing Act 2. So that's pretty much it, just skipping through, and thank you for watching if you got into this point, and we'll see you in the next chapter, slash act I should say. See you then.
Hello everyone, we are back with Kentucky Route Zero, Act 3. And this act is going to be our longest yet. This video is 45 minutes long, and I sped up a lot of parts because there are a lot of long periods of time. This probably took me about an hour and a half or so, probably even maybe a bit longer because I sped up a lot of parts. But there are five achievements in this, even though it is longer, so that's great. So hopefully we can get a lot of achievements done, and hopefully this guide helps. So there'll be a lot of parts where I'm not talking because there's just these long waiting periods. But I'll try to be as descriptive as I can for anything you need to know. Starting off here, we're going to head straight south. Towards the player, you. And once we hit this lamppost here, in this area, you won't be able to go f further south, so just hit a left once you switch to this character here. Down and to the left. And once you get farther down here to the left, you'll see this person with a little boat here. We are, we're going to talk to them. And so just talk to them, then you're going to click, did you make that boat, like I did there. Press OK. And we're going to let that boat drift for a while. And this is actually a two-parter. This is, is an achievement we're going to get right here. But this is required for another achievement later on, so it's a two-parter. If you don't do this, you're going to miss several achievements. Now Flora will talk to us again. As you can see, there's a chat bubble above her. I was I thought we had to watch till this floated completely off screen, but not by the looks of it. You can just talk to her. And what you have to say here is just barely if I squint. And this will unlock the achievement Say Something Romantic for watching Flora launch her paper boat. And we'll come back to this later when, when the second part of it... Uh, is available right near the end of the act so it's not for a very long time but I thought for perhaps you had to watch this go completely off screen so I make sure it just does just to be safe because I did that I know it works and I cannot necessarily confirm that it wouldn't if like that you would still get the achievement if you left right then and there I would think so I don't see why not but I made sure it went completely off screen Now we're ready to move on. We're going to go back to the truck. And we're going to start driving. And I'm not sure if anything specifically is required here, but I knew we were just going back to the highway, so I said, let's just um, look for another station or whatnot. Um, because what's going to happen here is when we move on, we're not actually going to get to where we're going, so it probably doesn't matter what you click. But you can see we're back on the highway. That's why I avoided the option to say we're going back to the zero, because I wasn't really sure. But as we move, we're going to break down. So there's going to be a lot of quiet parts of me talking, because there's not a whole lot to say here. Once we're broken down, um, you're going to pick the truck, and we're going to talk about a plan. Uh, Shannon, What Shannon's going to do is she's going to call for help to get a tow truck out here to help us. And then we're just going to check in with her afterwards to see how that went. Then we're just going to, we have to wait around, so we're going to talk to both Ezra and the dog. And you'll see what happens once we do all of this talking. Just going through all the dialogues. Because um, it does take a bit of time here. Just making sure we talk to everyone and do everything that we can.
And here's where we're checking back in with Shannon to get the update on the tow truck. Which is good. But the tow truck's not what we're going to be pursuing in this game. So that doesn't totally matter. It just helps us advance. But there's going to be something else that we're going to be doing. So I guess I'm just clicking all the dialogues. Going through all the dialogues. Moving this mission along. Or this part of the act, I should say. And you can see there I had lost my cursor. And this is what we're looking for. This is the next part of the mission. So we've got Johnny. And I believe it's yeah, June Bug here. And they're going to drive past us eventually. And what your goal to do. Like the goal is. I just kind of skipped through the conversation a lot. I tried to be cognizant of any sort of dialogue in which it referred to us. Because what you're essentially trying to do. Is one is convincing the other to slow down and help us, our, our main characters that broke down. And you can see that there's us, they're driving past us. So you can see we're, we better keep moving. Um, and this, I saw this just for a few minutes, which made me think that was the option we had to click to stop and help them. I didn't see what the guy said beforehand, or the person said beforehand, so I'm not 100% sure that it was in response to us. But, yeah, we're just trying to convince them to slow down. Or they're trying to convince each other to slow down, in which they do. Here they are coming in to help us. Basically, now we're all just going to talk. Just trying to be polite in my conversation a little bit. And we're going to get their help. Just a lot of dialogue. A lot of things we're going through. But like I said, we're going to get the truck up and running. And we're good to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head east. Right now it's east. But we're heading northeast on the interstate, Interstate 65. And we're going to go up past Equus here, up past uh, Marquis Farmhouse. And then soon after, right here, we're going to hit your right. It's where the arcade is. That's how you know when to turn in. I turned off early. But we're not going to the arcade. We're going to the tavern. And fair warning, this part is going to be pretty long. Longest part to date. And there's no achievement or anything like that in this section. It's just going to be a really long section. If you like music and whatnot, uh, or if Easter eggs and, and just plotline and storyline interest you, you might appreciate it. I'm going to speed it up because it's a very long time. But we're going into the uh, bar here. And we're going to talk to the bartender. And essentially what's going to happen is Junebug is going to put on a performance. So we're just going to talk to the bartender really quick because we're going to need their help. And we're just saying like, you know, how about some music? We brought some people. Um, and we're like, couldn't I selected here? Don't you want to hear some music? Like we're telling them, yeah, we're going to get someone going. And we're getting one of these newcomers that we have, Junebug, which we're going to click on right there. And she's going to take the stage. So here goes Junebug. And Junebug's quite literally going to blow the roof off this joint. As you're starting to see here, I mean, not technically, I guess, I guess like it's just breaking apart and floating. So it's more of a vision, like not a reality sort of thing. It's just something cool. But I let the, the roof float up here and then this is where I'm going to speed it up quite a lot. 
And because of that, it's going to cut out a lot of the music, but it's something you'll come across in here once you get to that point. So I actually thought I was just listening at first. You can see the moon, moon skip, and that's because I didn't click on anything. Make sure to click one of those lyrics, and then they'll sing that lyric, that chorus. And like this is very sped up. You can tell because you saw the moon originally going really slow, and now it's just blitzed off screen. Here you'll get another selection. Make sure you click one. They'll sing another chorus. With how sped up this is, you can really tell how long it's going to be. And I slowed it back down because the roof's coming back and this part of the mission is done. I probably could have sped up that roof part too, but I thought it was just kind of cool to see. So I just really sped up the song to cut it all out. But now what we're going to do is we put on the show for Harry. So you can just go straight over to Harry. What we're doing is we're going to get an IOU from Harry. Um, and in this dialogue, I tell Harry that we need to find an entrance to the zero, which is what we're doing next. So we'll just skip through this dialogue. Ask for the IOU, the entrance. Like You can see here I say there's the options. We just need to get pointed towards the zero. And he'll direct us. And then we can move on to the next part of the mission. Now that we are back on the highway, what we're going to have to do is, you're going to see this radio button in the bottom left. You need to put it to a certain radio channel. So I flipped it over to FM, cranked it up to the 10, I went a little too high here, but the 103 area, 103.9 roughly is where you want to be. I was thinking that was more over here, but I was in the wrong area. I switched it back over to AM. Once you have the right channel, Shannon's going to stop you. And she's going to say she hears horses. So now what we have to do is we have to go track down where those horses are. I'm not sure if it's a specific location. My understanding was you just kind of had to drive around until it triggers. Uh, but you'll see exactly where I got this, where I discovered the horses. But I'm not sure it'll, it'll be the like exact same position for everyone. Like I don't think you could have driven right to where I was to find them. But... I mean, it'd be pretty easy to try, so you could definitely try it out and see if it works. So I tried driving along the interstate. Eventually I got to the point where I was like, I'm going to run out of interstate. I'm just going to quickly go into another area. I also switched, switched back to FM, which may have been a bad idea. As you'll see, um, I wasn't sure how long it would take. And it's not until I switch back to AM that it actually works. So wherever she says she found the horse station, keep it there. Don't uh, don't mess around with it like I did. But you see, I'm just double checking to see what's where the radio station's at. And I hit right around this area. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back at the radio station. I'm in the upper left corner here. I want to say northwest, but I don't have the cut. There's no compass at the moment, so I can't be certain. 
But go back to the radio. I adjusted a little bit. And I hit the right radio station because it was different on the FM side by a little bit. And here's where those horses we heard are triggered. Now we're back on the zero where the horses are, as you can see. And we need to find the hull of the mountain. So we're going to head down to the left here clockwise. And it's really not that far. And there it is, hull of the mountain king. Sorry, mountain king. So we're moving on to scene four. Um, We have to climb the top of him to the top of this mountain that it's referring to. This is a really long scene. There's a lot of long walks, a lot of waiting. So I'm going to do a lot of skipping, as you can see here. My guy is like sprinting, but he won't be. He'll be walking on your screen. So this is all sped up because it took a really long time. As you can probably tell now from how quick he's going. And not just this part, but a lot of this stuff. We're going to be walking around this campfire a lot. So I'm going to speed up a lot of that. Once we get to the top here, just head to your left. And there's people you can talk to, as you can see, but we're going to skip them and go right over here to the old man. And he's going to talk about a computer. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'd pronounce that, but I call it the Zandu. And it's this program that we're going to be using as we move forward. So now we'll click that option to run over to the Zandu. This is sped up because this did take a bit of time. Now that we're over here, click the electronic button to try and get it working. I didn't really I, I didn't realize it would go into another scene here, but this scene will be really long as well. Um a very, very long scene. Definitely one of my least favorite parts so far, and you're gonna see why in a moment. So we're powering up this machine here. It does a lot of stuff on its own. It's essentially going to bring us to a lot of different areas. Just one for now, but you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. So we can see that it's kind of broken. And that's important for our storyline. Surprising, it's, I mean, that was another scene. This, I didn't realize how many scenes are jam-packed into this part. That is not the long scene. Maybe I'll just stop promising that the, the scene's coming up, because apparently I don't know, and I'm getting it very wrong. Anyway, sped up, go back over here. Like, this is sped up, I should say. Click the Donald option, run over the Donald. 
And you're going to tell him the computer is broken. He's going to help us fix it. Or help us find a way to fix it, I should say. Yep, and that's why I didn't promise that scene would be long, because I would definitely have been wrong. A lot of short scenes here. So this brings us to the graveyard, which will only be here for like 30 seconds a minute. We'll come back here later, uh, as it will progress us in the story, but there's not much to do here for now. So there's some things you could do. You could inspect the gravestones after talking here. But really to progress, just talk to Junebug right there in the center. And the main characters have come back. So that means we can move on. And another scene. So now that we're back, talk to Donald again. We're going to give him a reason why the computer is broken. I just said, you need to unplug it for a while. That'll fix it. After all that, now we can just run back to the computer and apparently unplug it and replug it in and it'll work. And here we are fixing the computer. Now this is the really long scene. This part will take like 15 minutes maybe, like a pretty long time. You're just playing through like a story of a, in a game within the this game. Uh, so I just skipped through most of it because I don't think it really matters what you do. I just try to pick options that... At the start, you want to get to the edge of a hole. So I ran into the forest because that seemed to make sense to me. Um, but then towards the end, you need to eventually lead your way to the Hall of the Mountain King, which is where you are now. You'll see a picture of it. You'll know when you're there. So I'm going to head and go ahead and speed up this part. Because it takes a long time of just walking around. But this part's important. At the edge of a hole. You're going to get some options. And you're going to need to click that option that I do there to lean in a bit. And check it out. This will kill you in the game. And this will give you the achievement you died for dying in Xandu. Once you've done that, I've just skipped on past because this tip part takes really long. But once you've died in Xandu, you want to select the option to use a rope and climb down safely. And that will get you down into the cave that we're exploring. So like I said, it takes a long time. 
Um, you can skip further on in, and I'll try to put a in the description. I'll put a link into the part where it'll matter. I mean, I guess it's coming up here anyways, but where it'll matter what you do input. So now we're at the Hall of the King, which means we're kind of in the right area. But we're looking for <laughs> the program itself, the Xandu. Sort of narcissistic, it wrote itself into the game. So you're going to come to this part where it says, Hire a new research assistant, assign, sleep. I'm not sure if there's, like, what the purpose of this is exactly. Apparently, like, you can seemingly continue on with this past the point which I do. So hire some research assistants. Um, like one, maybe two. If you can't hire any more, it'll say you've maxed out the hiring for that day. Then you want to assign them to tasks. I don't know if it matters what. Like, I don't know if I had clicked assign two here, would have gotten that done with. You could quickly move over to sleep. Probably. Probably be the fastest way you could do that. I just spread, spread the research assistance out because I wasn't sure. And you can see that these numbers change and update. Um... And this is the part where we're going to be able to finally move on from this game. And you'll see how in a second, as I'm kind of skipping through this a bit to assign the, the research assistants. So now we've come to the section where you get the option to try and quit and start over. You could continue, but this is how to continue on with the game. So press that. Press come on, kid. We've got stuff to do. And then, doesn't matter what you pick here. Quit game or exit. You can do whichever you like. As well here, eat the lamp, smash the computer, depending on what your choice was. I'm not sure if it will be the same. But this is where you have to click. Maybe we have to wait it out. And that's finally how you get past this game, this really long chapter. Or scene, they're called scenes, I'm calling them chapters, chapter sounds nice. And we're moving into chapter scene 10. Yes, I did that on purpose. So I'll speed this part up again in here in a second. But we're going to talk to this person here really quick, to Lula. Because she's returned for whatever reason. I wasn't reading all of that. There was so much going on. And like it took me 15 minutes without reading all of that. So like if you wanted to enjoy the story. It's going to take a while. But appreciate the developer's hard work. I'm sure it was very interesting. And you know go for it if you want to. But like I said I'll speed this. I'm speeding this part up here. We're running down the mountain. Because this is a long ways up and down. And then we can head back into the night and leave. So now we have to find the bureau, which we're going to drive counterclockwise, so down to the right, until we reach Cathode Ray, right here. Take Route 65, and now drive clockwise, opposite direction. Um, so when I tell you this, this is what... I was told in a guide, I looked up uh, like a direction and how to get there, and this is what I was told. What you're going to see here is, I have I never found the bureau. Um, this didn't seem to work for me. I don't know if I had to keep driving, but at some points I started driving backwards because I was like, no, nah, this can't be right. I don't think it should have taken that long, so um, Needless to say, the guide I found, I'm not sure how, ac how accurate it is, because it didn't seem to work. But maybe if I had kept going, it would have worked? I'm not sure. I don't think so, though. But eventually, you'll get to this point where there's a ZZZ, like a sleeping symbol on the bottom left of your screen. You can see it on my screen now. If you click it, Junebug offers to take over. You have to press, yeah, that's a good idea. If you say, I'm fine, you'll just keep driving yourself. But she'll take you straight there. I'm not sure why it didn't pop up. You'll see it will next time. 
But I just keep going clockwise a little bit and we'll come across the bureau. But before we get there, I want to be clear. Do not click on the bureau. That's how you progress in the game, but that's not what we're doing. We're going to get an achievement here as well. So now we found the bureau from driving clockwise. So from the bureau, what we're going to do is we're going to go backwards from where we were going, drive counterclockwise until we see the TV, which is coming up here really soon. So we're just going around in circles a couple times. And there's the TV. So stop and slowly drive back the other way clockwise. The exact direction we just came from. You can see I'm just taking it nice and slow. Don't click on the 70. And there's a van. We're going to go ahead and click on that. Now, for whatever reason, we're the dog, and all you want to do is walk to the far left as far as you can. This will give us the achievement, Phil and Jane, for finding Phil and Jane on the zero. Now, I was waiting for them to like, pop up, like, where are they? Are they going to come see me? Are they at the van? Are they going to walk out? Um, I feel kind of silly, maybe, for not noticing. You may have seen it already, but they're up there on the mountain, just chilling, looking like they're going to ambush us or something, so... We're just going to turn around and leave and leave them to it. I did click on their van and stuff. I don't think you need to. You just should be able to just turn around and leave. And the achievement will be yours. Now we're just heading back into the night. You can see the ZZZ sleeping option is uh, still there on the bottom left. So I would just recommend clicking it and having Jubenbug drive you straight to the destination. As you'll see, I, I'll click it here. I clicked I'm fine by accident. But like I said, make sure you click the option where um, she drives you. I was debating on doing it myself, but... This is just going to be the quickest route. And boom, we're back at the Bureau. And we can continue. Now that we're back at the bureau, we're just going to go over to reception, which you'll see the option on the far left there to, re to return to the receptionist, which is Lula, I do believe. Or no, wasn't her name Marianne. Oh, it is Lula now. Okay. So she's going to talk about a fairy that's coming to get us, which will take us to the next part of the camp or the the act. I've used so many words now: campaign, act, chapter, scene. So we're just going to go wait with our friends for the fairy to show up and take us. So you should recognize this part. I talked about it earlier. 
we're back in the graveyard. And so you'll see the little boy or whoever it is come out um, with, I believe it was Junebug. But now we're taking over uh, Shannon and the Conroy that we're going to, I believe. We're going to head into the church. Basically, we're showing you what they did in the church, sort of, because like they were gone for like 15 seconds and we are going to be gone for a lot longer than that. So sit on the bench here. Talk to her. And this next part, I don't understand. Maybe if I was like reading stuff, I'd get what's going on, but I don't understand. We're now descending into a secret underground facility, shipping and bottling facility. And I'm not trying to give too much, too much away before we get there. But as you can see now, bottom right corner of the screen, it's run by skeletons. I don't understand why, but. We're going to take control of that skeleton. Apparently we like visitors who are humans and not dead, like undead skeletons. And we're going to give them a tour. So this is the last area of the act. It will also have another additional achievement that we can get that I'm going to show you how to grab. You can notice now it's really bright. I kind of screwed up the order here. Uh, we're just going to do this we're forced into this dialogue this will just take us out and bring us back um we're f it's gonna get darker uh if you do exactly what i do uh if you want it to be a bit easier on yourself maybe try to attempt this achievement i'm gonna kind of describe it but i'll show you as well later how to do it so there's shuttles here i would recommend going in the shuttle it's quicker there's a there's a big place and we're gonna go to multiple areas because of the fact that we're doing that another achievement so once we get in um going straight sort of downwards uh will take you towards where the achievement's gonna be you're gonna find like a mess hall barracks all that stuff drive past that to the shipping yard or the docks i believe it is this is the shipping yard so to the docks and you'll have to look at the water there. Watching the water will give you an achievement while it's still bright out. So I'm going to show you this first. This is how you progress the act. Doing this is fine. You can still get the achievement afterwards. You just see what I mean afterwards, that it's a little bit darker. And it'll be harder to see uh, exactly what I need you to see. So I don't know what happened there. There was kind of a bug like with the vehicle. I was trying to move around to go elsewhere. But I'd already clicked on this truck, so this is where it kind of ropes you into this part of the campaign. Um, so you have to follow the prompts at this point with the truck. So for whatever reason, we're going to help the skeleton. I mean, I can see now that we're part skeleton. Our Conway's left leg is. Yeah, it is Conway. And we're going to do a spot check on the truck. So pick all the options, rip through the dialogue. When I clicked the back, I was like, how are they going to look at the back? And they actually will run all the way around. So if you get through it quickly, try to jump into another one, you'll see he turns around. Doesn't walk all the way to the back. <laughs> Didn't even check the back, to be frank, because he never got there. But that's fine. They don't seem to care. I mean... <laughs> what's the worst that's going to happen with the drivers? So... Now that we're done this, I had a glitch. I had to reload this checkpoint. Like, I just reloaded and brought it straight to here. Jump back in the vehicle. And we're going to head back to where we started. But don't stop the vehicle where we started. If you're doing this achievement now. The, if you're doing the achievement earlier and skip to this point to figure out where you're going, I'll show you exactly where to go. So you can see it's a lot darker. So it's not as easy to, to traverse. But it's fine. So that's where we started, where it says park there. So we're going down like I had mentioned. And now we've hit that mess hall quarters area. So this is the quarters. We're following along down to the right. And now we get the chance to turn inwards, which we're going to do. And now we're at the mess hall, which I also had mentioned. 
Just keep on driving. Because we're not at the docks yet. Which, as you can see, now we are. And you notice these, like, blue... Um, we didn't stop here. and That kind of threw me off. So just make sure you park the vehicle. It'd be... A lot easier to tell if it was brighter, but you'll see like these blue water pumps. Just walk between them and stare at the water. Now this part is, I had mentioned right at the start of the act, this is a two-parter uh, achievement with that little floating paper boat. So you can see where my mouse is highlighting in the bottom right there. If you look close, you can actually see the paper boat there. If you really want to see it, the, data, the brighter time is better. But there's another achievement for, it's called Under the Horizon, for finding Flora's boat in the distillery. And that's it for all of our additional achievements. Now we're just going to quickly head back to where we entered and we're going to wrap up the act. So I couldn't remember where to go. Um, just follow the video. I, I it kind of chopped around a little bit because I was kind of messing around, driving around. But it shows you basically directly where to go. Leave the barracks, go up and to the left. Then as soon as you can, turn up and right inwards. And you'll spot the, the vehicles here. They're a little harder to see because it is dark. Um, I wasn't sure what this vehicle was doing over here, like if we needed it. But don't worry about that. Just head straight up the stairs. Back to where we came from in that secret church uh, tunnel or lift. So you'll see you're stopped again. So quickly talk to this guy. And then we can head back up to the machine that we initially saw the skeleton using. So going back up the stairs. We're going to go over to that machine and click on it. But you can see that Conway is walking over. He's going to drink and he's going to use the machine. And that's it. Follow along with this dialogue. And that's the end of Act 3 to get you that achievement Act 3 <laughs> for completing Act 3. Did I say Act 3 enough times? I think so. So I'm going to stop talking here. This is just sort of the end little bit. Just follow along with it and uh, follow this dialogue a little bit. And that's the end of the act. We'll see you in the next video. Good luck. Hello everyone, welcome back to another walkthrough, and today we're back with Kentucky Route Zero, Act 4. Now, just some disclaimers ahead of time. You do have to do this act twice, and for this first walkthrough that I'm going to show you, you will need to do part of it on a Tuesday if you're going for all the achievements. I'll explain that why in a second, but right here from the start of the game, you can see we're on the front of a boat. Will and Kate are here, Will on the left, Kate on the right. We have to talk to both of them. We're going to start with Kate and then click to walk all the way to Will. I'm not sure why one of the achievements has to be done on a Tuesday. To, on a Tuesday. Uh, if you're on the Xbox, I know that you could like go offline before and switch the dates and change it. I'm doing this on PC if you can't tell by the mouse. Uh, so I, I've never tried to change the dates on a PC. I'm sure you can. I've just never bothered and never had a reason to. I happen to be playing this Monday night, and this gameplay right here is Monday night. And then Tuesday, 
I like stopped right before the section that you need to do on Tuesday. Then on Tuesday morning, um, early in the morning, before I had to do anything else, I started it up and, and did that part of the mission. So yeah, you will need to do it on Tuesday, and you will need to do this twice. This first playthrough um, that I'm going to be doing right here, and sorry, Ezra's coming out of the door here. We're going to talk to them, and then we're going to run in. We're going to take over as them once we're talking here and go inside. And uh, a lot of these parts are going to be sped up as well. This part isn't like a lot of the things that show intricate sort of details almost. Um, there's a lot of boating around and things. I'm going to speed it up. But as I was saying, we're going to do all the long versions of stuff first. And here's Ezra clicking on the musicians, by the way. That's what you have to do here. We're going to do all the long versions. And I'm going to show you the shorter sort of versions of things you can do. On our second playthrough. And now Ezra has to click this recording button. You'll notice a couple of recording buttons throughout the game. This one and only one other one are mandatory. There will be like three, four, or five others or so. Uh, now we're taking over this guy and going back to the front of the boat to talk to Shannon. And when the recordings kind of play into the game later in the second playthrough if you want to get them. If you're speedrunning, not really necessary, and I'll show you that as we go. But for this playthrough, you're always gonna you're gonna come up to like seven or so. I think it might be eight um, places on this boat cruise or j boat journey. And for this playthrough, you're always gonna choose whatever option resembles getting off the boat to go to that place, as I'll show you every single time. The second playthrough, you're always gonna stay on the boat. So these parts are sped up. The boat does not move this quick. I assure you. All this boating time, you're just clicking on all these conversations, which I haven't done yet. But you're clicking on them to go through them until you hit to the next location, which right here is the gas station. As I mentioned, you want to pick the option where you go into the gas station on the first playthrough. Which, once we close this dialogue, we'll get our options. First one, stay on the tugboat. Second one, follow them onto the gas station area. And that's what we're going to click. And I won't talk through every part because it's not totally necessary as we wait for some things to happen. But I will try to speed up little points. This is only a 45 minute video. And this took me several hours to do both these playthroughs. So it's been sped up quite a lot. So at the gas station, what we're doing is we're trying to get snacks. So we take control of this character first. We're going to talk to the attendant. And talk to them about snacks. He said something about being snacks being back there, so I clicked on the eye to go look at them. You can see that they're talking to themselves. Um, then you're going to want to head back out. And go click on talk to Johnny. And now we're going to take over as Johnny, and Johnny's going to go try and check out the snacks. And can you blame him? Who loves, who doesn't love a good snack? So we're going to, we're going to click on the attendant. And that's it. Then we can leave the gas station area. Go talk to Junebug and we're going to go back on the boat. And here we are back in the boat. Bit of dialogue. Like I said, I'll speed this part up just so we can get through it. Actually, I don't believe I split, sped this up because the next section is actually really close. A couple of them are kind of close, like this one here. A couple of them, there's a long distance to travel.
But we're going to click follow the others to the beachside bar to the rum colony. And this is our next location, the rum colony. So this location will have an achievement that we're going to get right away. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So as this character, we're going to run straight up to the bar, get nice and close. And we're just going to sit here. Eventually the phone's going to ring. Don't talk to Patch. Make sure not to click that button. Eventually the fo phone is going to ring and Patch is going to answer it. And that will get you the achievement, Patch speaking, for answering the phone in the rum colony. So we're just going to wait a moment. It's not too long. Just waiting a few seconds and there it goes. You'll get some dialogue options. So we're just going to click, I think you have the wrong number. And that's it. Hang up and there's your achievement. So now the next part is we need to engage with this musician over here, but they're currently playing a song. So we're just going to go to the stage and wait. You could look around for a few seconds while they're playing and then just head over to the stage when they're done. The first time I did this, I did go look around and when they stopped playing, I rushed the stage and I was able to carry on. I ended up restarting and this time Patch answered the phone again, which didn't happen to me the first time I was wandering around. So I wasn't sure why I just quickly read through that, but that's not really necessary. I'm not sure why he answered the phone that time. And now we can talk to Saron. Sarono. It seems like a weird name. It's not like Cypress. That's Sir. Cyrano. I'll just butcher that name for a little while while they're talking. But essentially, you're going to take this and you're going to collect money for them. I just clicked the person right next to us to quickly collect money and returned it. We can continue. So now what you have to go do is talk to Patch. Or sorry, not Patch, Conway over here. And we're telling them that we're about to leave. Just a lot of dialogue that we've got to skip through. Now we can head over to the boat and talk to them. But we're going to have to go back to Conway in a second. And while we're doing that, we're going to go talk to the people on the boat and then go back to Conway. But what I'll say is you'll notice that there's a light symbol in the bottom middle of the screen. I guess what, what I've kind of realized over the course of this game is when there's an option like that, there's some sort of reason for it like an easter egg something or other that's going to happen so if you want for fun in this section turn on your light which i'm about to do here and you'll notice something funny over by conway just some previously invisible skeletons just chilling with them and we're going to talk to him again that gets us off this uh, bar area and i'll speed up as we move right along to the third area And now we're at the telephone. Again, we're going to click the option stop to do business by the telephone to go on to the telephone barge. In this part, I'm going to speed up. I really don't get it. It's just like a lot of dialogue. From what I've come across, it seems like these are real recordings from players who called like a certain number during this game's initial release. Um, they were asked a couple of questions or something, I think. And so it's a lot of this stuff. I skipped. I honestly didn't read any of it. Might be interesting though. If you did find some interesting stuff, leave a comment and let me know. You know, I miss a lot of dialogue storylines. Let me know what I'm missing out on. But I'm just going to race through it. Just a lot of talking on the phone. We're just trying to blitz through it till we can get back on the boat. You can see the phone rang there and we're talking to a character from the start of the game there with the antlers. Didn't catch his name quick enough. I can't recall his name. Cannington or something. 
So yeah, do pay attention to some things. And now we're moving right along to our fourth stop on the boat ride. The Radvansky Center or something. So we're going to click on stop at the Radvansky Center to make some quick cash. To make sure we're going on to the, the location on site. So this part's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm going to quickly walk you through it, but I'm going to speed it up a lot. As there's just a lot going on. It takes a bit of time. So you'll see a bit of footage here first. Can't do anything just yet. And now we're in a room where we can move around. So I go to the left and I observe this bookshelf. And then I go to the right here and observe this. Well, I sat down first, but you don't need to do that. I don't believe, just go over to the right and observe this painting. And I wasn't sure what to do at first. So I was trying to sit down, but you actually want to go to the bottom of the screen here to where this chair is. And you can see here you'll sit and do some, like fill some sort of paper out. And this will move us on to the next section once you click that pencil and writing symbol there at the bottom. Now we're in this area here. So I click on this first uh, eye symbol to talk. And I clicked on the second one. And I don't know what the dialogue said and why. I think it's Ezra walked up to us and looked at us and just booked it, but kind of weird. But a little more dialogue, and we're moving on to the next section. Same sort of pattern as before. We're going to click on a couple of things before we're able to use the piece and paper, the piece of paper there, or um, fill it, do whatever they're supposed to get us doing. So we're in this room. We're able to walk around. There's not much options here except to sit down there really quick. I mean, really quick, I guess, is a relative term because we're ripping through this response here. Um, it's sped up, so it's a lot quicker than what it's going to be for you when you're playing. And now we've got a cat. So we need to interact with this cat. So if you go over to the desk here, you can press this. I believe that's getting us a camera. So we're going to walk back over to the cat. And interact with the cat. Or was it food? I was thinking it was a camera, but I guess it's food. And that completes that. A little bit more dialogue here again. Lots of dialogue. Plenty of dialogue in this game. And the last thing to do here is just click on this calendar. I click to the right. Not sure what would happen if you click to the left, but that's all I need to do.
and this freaking cat again. Whose cat is this? Ezra doesn't care. Apparently he's not a cat guy. Or whoever that was. I think it was Ezra. Didn't even pet the cat. Like, who is this guy? You can see what I mean. That this this part's just a lot of dialogue. And here comes the kitty cat chasing. So is it Jen? I just keep calling him Ezra the whole time. No, is that Jen in Miami? I don't know. But finally, that, that we're back on the boat. And we're moving on. Next section is the Grove, which kind of gives us something we haven't done yet, which is sort of sort of different. You'll see what I mean in a second. This area was a bit closer, so I didn't speed it up. And here it is. And click the option to go on there, like on the grove, which is forage for mushrooms in this case. Not taking a nap on the boat. And so on this grove, I had, we hadn't seen this before, but we're doing two chats at the same time. I'm not really sure why, but if you click on one, you'll sort of notice I've sped this up quite a lot because there's a lot to it. If you click on one, you can start letting the conversation go while you spam click on the other one. Do that for a while and you can alternate. Try to keep both going for a bit because they both need to run their course before they end and you can press on. Looked very quick. It was not. It was a couple of minutes or so. But just run through it. And we're moving on to the exchange. So for this, I should say, when you're given the option on the boat, which one to choose, if you try to do the option, it doesn't matter what you click, but if you try to stay on the boat, you're going to have to go through this um, cooking thing, which will show in the second playthrough. So I clicked the one that got us going on the boat. And what we're doing is we're floating down the river here, and you'll see that the, we aim our light at that... Uh, whatever this is like I really have no idea there was a symbol to examine it that came up so I just examine everything as we go down the river and this is sped up a lot as well um because it's just kind of lengthy but you'll see some of these things coming up like that as a symbol we can click on it as we're floating by And if you follow my playthrough for both uh, this and the second playthrough, this is the only thing that's going to repeat like this section. There'll be another part to this section, but everything else beforehand will be different. And this will be the first thing that's the same. For when I discovered Conway's like afraid of bats or something, so I tried turning off the light and it'll trigger like another dialogue with them, which you can see it right there. But I think you need the light to progress. You can't just leave it on don't need to turn it off and keep progressing
And finally, we know we're coming to the end when we hit this tunnel section. So this is down to normal speed. You can see how slow we move. And then we're going to do a couple things in this tunnel. We're going to make a quick decision, which I'll explain in a second. And we're going to move on. So click this chat bubble here on the left. Sorry, not Conway's there though, but um, I moved up. Oh, sorry, we do need to talk to Conway. This is going to be the very last time we're talking to Conway, which sounds sad if you're attached to the characters. And I'll explain in a second because there's going to be a choice. But we're going to talk to Conway and kind of say goodbye there, I think. I didn't really read the dialogue. And then we're going to talk to this guy right here. Um, there's someone across the water, Flora there. Don't need to talk to them. I'm not sure what that would have done, but we're just going to move on. Ignore the plot too. Don't need to look at that. Less like you're interested in the story by all means. But to progress, we just need to talk to Poppy over here. So while we're talking here, there's going to be a choice that's coming up that I'm going to explain. So as Conway's driving away forever, you'll see an arrow symbol and a skull symbol ne next to the dog here on the right. The arrow means the dog will stay with you and it'll be in Act 5. The skull means it'll go with Conway and won't be in Act 5. I'm going to pick the skull for two reasons. The first is, if I'm not mistaken, it was Conway and the dog that started this game. They're like the OGs, so I kept them together. Secondly, kind of selfish, the dog was slow in some chapters and I didn't feel like dealing with it. But there's Conway apparently officially turning into a skeleton. I send the dog on his way with the skeletons. Though he doesn't go on the boat, I'm really hoping they're pulling over here to get the dog that I sent off with them. But they kind of look like they're just taking off without him, so... You know... Probably about one of the one of the few things that you know gets an emotional response from me, like what the heck you're leaving this dog I gave you. But like I said, kind of selfish. The dog can be a bit slow, and I didn't feel like dealing with that in Act Five. So, in the sake of finishing the game quicker, getting the achievements quicker, I sent the dog on his on his way. Then we're back to the boat. And this next part here, you have to go here no matter what, whether you're on the first playthrough or second playthrough, this part's kind of forced, as I'll put it. But here we are at the next part. There's going to be multiple achievements here that I'm going to show you how to get. And this is at Sam and Ida's. So climb up this building here to the top of the restaurant, I guess it is. And I should say, this is the part that you're going to need to play on a Tuesday for. Like, you're going to need to be playing on a Tuesday to do this achievement. I mean, if you don't believe me, that's totally fine. Try it not on a Tuesday. See if I'm wrong. I really don't know why you need to be on a Tuesday, so I'd be curious if someone tried it. I was able to try it on a Tuesday very easily, so I just did. But you're going to walk over here to the side... Johnny's going to be here, and he's going to ask you for a quarter. Say, sure, I have one quarter. And give him the quarter to try the game out. You're going to click, I'll try to get the headphones. And then we're going to click, once we have the option, move the joystick right. Move the joystick up. Move the joystick right. And then push the button to drop the claw. And apparently, because it's a Tuesday, the claw will hold on to the headphones 
giving them to us, getting us the achievement. Well, I guess this is, makes it self-explanatory that it needs to be Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Win the claw game at Sam and Ida's. But hold on, because we've got another achievement coming right up. Once we're back in control of our last character. Apparently I'm terrible with names. I want to say Shannon, but I'm... Is this Ezra? No, Ezra is the, the kid. It is Shannon. Okay, so we're back in control of Shannon. Now the waitress is going to move up here and give us menus. And this is where we're going to get our next achievement. In just a second here. So they're not giving us the option yet. Even though Kate retrieved the menu. So Shannon gets it. We're going to click Shannon turn the page to look at another three options. Turn the page again. Look at another three options. Turn the page again. And now that we've looked at 12 options, this will get, the, get us the achievement here. You pick for learning about 12 dishes in Sam and Ida's restaurant. It kind of, the achievement doesn't say restaurant, but it kind of seems like an unfinished thought. Once you've looked at those 12 choices and gotten the achievement, just make your pick. And we're sort of moving on. We're almost at the end of the act. So hang on a bit longer. Now this part's kind of a pain in the butt. I don't get what's going on. Is it because we picked a food menu that, or food item that this person's slowly coming in with a fish? So I sped this up because like, I have no idea why we're waiting like three minutes for this guy to walk up a staircase. There's, I think there's a lot of great content in this story, a lot to learn, but some parts like this, like why are we waiting for a guy to walk up a flight of stairs for three minutes? Like, come on. What the heck? Like some parts, there's just no reason. It's not necessary. And then we've got to walk all the way back down. So I'll just keep that sped up because it's a pain in the butt. But you're going to click on the boat symbol here. And we're moving on to our final area of Act 4. So at the bottom, we've clicked on the boat. You're going to get the option to listen to these people play or move on. Just move right along to uh, continue the story by returning to the tugboat. So here's our last area. You're supposed to get options. I'm not sure if it's because in this first playthrough, you're always picking to go ashore. So we're forced to go ashore. And what we're doing is we're watching this performance from, I say ashore, but I'm pretty sure we're on a dock, if I'm not mistaken. And there'll be some dialogue. Just click whatever. I'm going to speed this up because it's quite a long time. See here, there's just some dialogue. Just speed through it. Pick whatever. Nothing will affect any of the gameplay, like getting through the game. There's no achievements to be had. But as soon as this song ends, I'll just go ahead and say this is the last section of Act 4. Which will, of course, give us the achievement Act 4 for completing Act 4. I always get tired of saying Act whatever it is five times in a row. But yeah, that's it. And then we're moving on. And then this is just a tiny cutscene to wrap up the act. And that's it. So, let's talk about this next achievement for redoing Act 4. So what you're going to do is, I think you can go ahead and finish the game if you want. Because your choices can't affect things. I didn't really care. I went and clicked on Act 4 and click Restart. You can see my Act 5 is not crossed off. I just went back and did it. Now I'm not going to show everything. I'm just going to show the choices that are different. So here's your first choice, gas station, as you'll recall. 
click to stay on the tugboat and look around. All these options were always going to click to stay on the tugboat. It's a lot quicker, I think, a lot less to do. Some of them were not even doing anything, but I'm going to quickly show those to show you what's going on and how to do them. You may recall I mentioned at the start of the story that there's some recordings you can get, and that's because it's going to affect the song at the end. So click that lookout button there that you saw me click. Um, but we will come across these recording options. I skipped through them. I'm only going to show you the next re uh, required one to beat this act. But you'll see in the end why it'll affect the final performance. Perhaps a spoiler. I'm not going to try and say too much. I try not to say too much. If I do, let me know. I really try not to. Just like, just trying to keep it basic. So you can see the recording in there. Now I'm going to skip it. Because it's not one of the necessary ones. We're just heading to the lower deck there. And on the far right here, we're talking to Will. And Will and uh, Will and I was gonna say I, us and Will are gonna be in a lot of this uh, boat parts, like these boat uh, missions. I'm not even sure we've seen Will, or I haven't paid attention enough to see Will to this point. I have no idea who that is. So, like I said, gonna just show our choices. Now we're at the bar, and this time we're gonna choose to retreat to the TV room, to the video collection. This part's pretty short and easy, short and sweet. Stand up. And we're going to eject this VCR. And we're going to grab a new one off the shelf. And just pick whatever one. Don't think it matters. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm sure it doesn't. And we're going to insert it into the TV. And then we're going to sit down and watch. And apparently we're very quickly... Not into this birds movie. I, mean, I guess we do listen for a bit technically because of this dialogue, but not bad. We're going to move on. The second choice, as far as I know, I believe it does matter. Um, you can pick whatever you want if you want to, but if you follow my choice, it won't give you any problems. One choice is just question marks, which is I mean, super ominous. And we're going to put that in the TV and watch it. Now we can stand up and we're going to go find Kate and Will on the main deck, which you can see the option to walk to the main deck is right there. And there we are, we're going to talk to them, and this will end this section. Now we're moving on to the telephone part, and we're going to click to lounge below deck. You may remember this part was kind of long the first time. So this part's kind of nice, because it's a really short cutscene with nothing to do. Super short and sweet, and that's it. So then we're moving on to clicking the button to teach us a card game in the next section. And that was just a quick, quick thing where uh, you just choose any options freely. So again, there's no point really showing you that. So I'm going to move on to the Grove where we're going to pick the option to take a nap. So there's a couple of these recordings that I've been mentioning. 
if you want to grab them. Um, I think they might be beneficial to the story itself. Uh, towards the end, not towards progressing, you absolutely don't need them. But if you just want to make it more inter interesting, feel free to grab those. So we're just going to skip along. And what we need to do is, uh, I think one of the recordings up here, if I recall. Yeah, so we're going to skip that. And I think there's one somewhere in the boat as well. But we're going to head to the very bottom, to the lower decks. So if we click Will here, this is the only other recording we have to get. You'll see the recording option here. He's sleeping, and we're going to record it, apparently. Or we're playing a recording, at least. But I think we also are recording him sleeping. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty certain we are. And you'll see what I mean later on, and you'll see why. So, moving along to... This is the part where we could have chose to... Um, what Shannon's going to do. She's going to go on the boat, or she's going to stay to make stew. This one doesn't matter. I clicked just to go help. This time I'll click do the stew. Uh, it really doesn't matter what you do. I would not recommend clicking making the stew. Because it just takes up more unnecessary time. But if you don't want to do it especially and you want to see what it looks like, I'm going to show you right here. And apparently moist is better to say it than slimy. Fun fact, if you didn't know that. That's what this game says. I didn't say it. I, mean, I said it. Not my opinion, but it's the game's opinion. I think I saw more recordings there, which I didn't get. I went over to the left, to the, uh, clicked on the eye, and now we're going to talk to Shannon. And you can see another recording there, but we just need to talk to Will. And that's it. Then we can do that whole section again, same as before. Nothing's going to change. One thing I should note, though, is when so it's kind of interesting. We're going to see this from a different vantage point. Now we're seeing the the audience and not the person doing the music. So she's going to talk about us having a special tape player. And this is where those recordings come into effect. So I'm going to speed this up a lot. But basically for this song, you're choosing to play the recordings that you found. And I think you had options like, see, there's Cat and they're sleeping. Those are the ones I had to get. But you could have gotten those extra ones. And I think there's like, you know, play it backwards, play it softly, play it this, that. So change it up, whatever you want to listen to, whatever you might think is interesting. Doesn't really matter. Nothing will change the story. Except basically it'll just alter your experience. This is it. This is the end of the game besides the other cutscene. This will get you the achievement Act 4 again for completing Act 4 a second time. That being said, good luck. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in Act 5.
Hello everyone, welcome back to another achievement guide. Today we are doing Act 5 of Kentucky Route Zero. This one's a lot shorter, especially compared to the last two, so it'll be nice in that sense just to wrap up the game. However, there's only two achievements in this section, so be mindful of that. A bit, bit of work you're going to have to put in. Uh, this video is only going to be about 10 minutes or so, but it's going to be a lot longer than that. I'm going to speed up a bunch of parts. Um, basically, what we're doing is there's going to be three area. This is one area, three separate times, where we're running up to a bunch of the people that we've gotten to know over the game and talking to them. So I'm going to um, skip around a bit and just show you exactly who I talked to and speed it up a lot just to show you the highlights and the things you need to do. But it's just a bit of searching around looking for people, so it's not too, too hard. You just have to leave screen and come back sometimes to find the people that you need to talk to. And right there on screen, we're actually going to be playing as that black cat there. So I ran to the middle, and you'll see these buttons down in the center, like that swirly button. That, uh, that's there in the middle of the screen. So I clicked this, another one's going to pop up. I clicked that one, another one will pop up. So I clicked a bunch of those. Um, and you can see here, I'm just running around a little bit and I'm going to start pressing those buttons now. And you can see I'm focused around this mound here. So there's this hole, you can see some of the people we're used to, and there's this dirt mound. And for the first achievement in this section, the only achievement besides completing the act, you're going to want to start right from this mound. So go find this spot here. I'm just pressing those buttons down the middle, as you can see. And once we pressed all of them, the screen will start to zoom out here. I'm, I would assume this is necessary. Maybe it wasn't a hundred percent, but you'll be able to see the surroundings better in order to navigate these people. So there's this big circle that we're on right now. And what we need to do is we need to follow the grass. So you can see there's kind of like grass and then water and then more grass and then water. So we're going to take our cat and we're just going to follow this grass path. So, you can walk in the water, absolutely, but for this achievement, we need to follow it. If you've seen anything online, there's this, like, swirly symbol with sort of a swirly tail um, that we've seen a lot in the game on loading screens and stuff, and this is the exact path we're taking. So, right here, I almost ran past him. you got to turn back around. I go off the path a bit, as you can see, but this will still get you the achievement. If you're pretty close, you don't have to be absolutely perfect. This one's a little more clear to see coming up. It's going to curve back. We're going to keep following that. Past this person. It'll curve one more time. And there will be a dirt mound there. So just stop at the dirt mound. I didn't get this my first or my second time. But this will get you the achievement, the map, for walking the Sears earthwork path in the town. And that's our only other achievement besides the axe. Now we're around town. I go up to these people. They're talking. I, I talk through that dialogue that we just need to click that black bar there in the bottom. There'll be a lot of different conversations. You'll for sure always want to click on ones with people holding hands. You can see here, I didn't really give you a chance to look at it, but there, there's the thing of people holding hands. We click on it, we talk to them, we run through that dialogue. Then I ran up over here to the, to the plane and did the same thing. I uh, talked to those people. It didn't have the people holding hands dialogue. I talked to these people. And I just keep working around in a circle looking for people. I thought this person would do something, but that spot right there is going to be important later. But if you work your way farther to the right, you'll see all these buildings. And I found Ezra and Flora here that we're going to talk to. Kind of towards the back a little bit more. Uh, if you look at the upper middle of the part of the screen right now, you'll see a bell tower. That's going to be important as well, but that's where we're looking for these two is up by that bell tower there. And just give me a second to show you kind of the area that they're in. But I'm going to walk away here. There's a storefront there. So I run around the map a little bit. Um, this is to the left of that guy. I said it would be important later, but below all these houses, he here, there he is there. There's that conversation. If we turn back around to the storefront, now I can see this conversation. And then we're going to finish off to the right over here at 5 Dogwood Drive, this giant, like, concrete white house sort of thing. I mean, I'm not sure really what it is, what the purpose is, how I would describe that. 
But that's the first section. And like I said, there's going to be three sections of this one area. So that's the first one. So starting off, this boy wants to race us. So we, if you click through the dialogue, he'll race you to the mailbox, which I thought was right here. So I stopped and he kept running. So there's a mailbox further down. Just run to that and that's it. The boy just wanted to race. Don't really know why. I mean, I would like, I don't know. I never thought of racing a dog, but you know, it's teach his own. Now on the right here, there's a group of people you can talk to. Same with on the group of people on the left, and I talk to them. Always ignore the people that are purely black figures, because um, they're not characters that we know of. Like in that hangar there, that was Johnny, I believe. Like it's one of the characters we know. They're not shaded in black, so we talk to them. Then we can go up by the cemetery there. There's multiple dialogues here. People holding hands, and so make sure to do both of those. And now I'm running around the town, back to the storefront that's on the opposite side of the map. We can see this person below the tree here, and we can talk to them. And I do skip, and there's there's people here in front of the church. I do skip around a lot, but this this map is really a finite, um, like it's not it's not huge, like it's very small and condensed, so it's not too hard to find these areas. This one I talked to right here in front of the barn. Then to the left, there's these horses being painted, and I talked to them there. Then I worked my way in a full circle. Came back to the storefront. Now there's someone here by the picnic table. Rita and Ezra. And we're going to talk to them. This one's a lot longer in comparison. And that's it. That's it for that second area. Now we're into our third area. Immediately on the right here, there's people at the store that you can go talk to. I say can. You should go talk to to progress then over in front of the barn we can see that this hole is really being dug so we're going to want to talk to this person because this hole is going to get bigger and bigger so we need to talk to them and leave to allow the hole to get bigger you can see the horse next to it so they're digging a hole for a horse why? I have absolutely no idea was not paying close enough attention so I went to the left here, worked my way up to the graveyard, had these multiple conversations here. Worked my way to the left again, and now this has kind of progressed at the hangar where they're now going to fly. It wasn't, you didn't seem to take off, so you can just keep going. Further walking myself in a circle, there's more people at the church here. And there was that squirrel there at the tree, and I don't think you'll need to worry about that. I didn't continue with that at all. You see the hole's actually been dug a lot more since we've last been here, so we're going to click on that again because they need to progress further. Then the other side of the map, there's this person just sitting there. Then over by the hangar on the left, there's this building that we're going to talk to. Though it didn't occur to me when I was playing, that building got destroyed, didn't it? Then here, I don't know who I was talking to there, but in the middle of the road, there was Ezra, and we could talk to them. And now we're going back to that bell tower that you'll recognize uh, from the first time we were in this area. That's where we kind of finish off. Then we walk over to the left, to the barn here. And now everyone's gotten together. Click on a couple of those conversations, like the hands. It starts up a new segment. We buried the horses. Um... And you can see the girl in the middle moving around a bit. If you don't have your headphones on, she's just singing a song. So we need to let that happen. This is a long part. Definitely needed this part sped up. And then we're going to get this overhead view. I didn't really pay attention to at which point we can run away. But basically when everyone had left, and I was like, what is going on? Like, I've been waiting. Uh, it turns out you could have just started leaving. So see here in a sec, everyone everyone went down and to the right. Uh, so that's where we need to go, and it just didn't occur to me right away. So then I head downwards to the right like they do, walking across the water here, down this road. Back to these, there's these circles of people congregating, but back to that white church concrete house, empty house building. I mean, now it's starting to have stuff in it, but I still don't understand the purpose. But that's where we had to go. And then we get roped into a little bit of a cutscene here, but this is the end of the act. 
This will get you the achievement. Look for me under your boot soles. Don't really know why. It's kind of a weird name for an achievement, but it's for completing Act 5. Don't know what or who would be under boot soles, but... That is what it is. And that's the first one, too. I mean, that's not been named after the act. Like, it's not Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4 is the achievement name. But there you have it. That's Act 5. That's the game. Now you can move on to the Act 5 uh, prelude if you haven't done that one already. Or at least all of them. I waited till the end to do all of them. And you're well on your way to 100% in the game. Good luck. Hello everyone, welcome back to another achievement guide. My name is Achieve Steve and today I'm going to be showing you how to do all five interludes. Each interlude is possible after its corresponding act is completed. So we're going to start off with interlude one after completing act one. Right from the start here, if you move to the right a little bit, you see that exit door? It had an eye over it that I clicked on. And I just clicked the option to walk on out. And this interlude is done. Now, there's some short ones like that, crazy short, unless you want to go through the whole thing to the left instead of walking to the right. I just did it as quickly as possible. But now we're moving into one of the locker interlude, longer interludes. So I'm going to speed this up a lot. You'll have to look at the conversations that are going on. You can see I'm looking straight ahead at the bartender. And this is me spamming through the conversation. Try to figure out where the next one is. Next one's straight down in front of you, as you can see here. I was looking around for the next one. The next one will be right up in front of you again. Someone else will walk in. There'll be a conversation between the three of them. And it's looking really fast. This is already 20 minutes in. This is a 30 to 45 minute thing. Probably about 30 minutes for me because I was spamming through. Once their conversations are done, you can see she gets, uh, gets up and leave. And we look down at our own table again. Everything else is black, but you have to look for the people in the blackness to find them. Or in the dark. And there's the people on our right. And this one bounces back and forth, which is really my, very much a pain. As you're bouncing between them. But it is what it is. You have to do it. Then this person shows up again. And we're just focused on them. And then it'll this one bounces back and forth really badly. And it was quite irritating. It makes it longer. Because you have to look at the people. To press on the conversations. And as you can maybe tell. These are a lot of dialogue. Then this light up here will light up. The hard times thing. Couldn't figure out where to look. And if you turn around. I, with the noise and everything, I actually found this kind of creepy. There's just a skeleton standing back here. And that's interlude two. Moving on to interlude three, here, there, along the echo. This is another very short one in which we just need to pick, like physically pick up the phone, as you'll see me do here, put it to our head, dial the number that's on that piece of paper. And you'll have the menu, and I'm going to speed this up. You'll have the menu walk you through, uh, like, press 1 to do this, press 0 to do this, blah, 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 blah. Once he reads all those options, you can just hang up the phone. What I did was I turned it, the speaker on. So when I hung it up, it didn't, if you're used to this kind of phone, you'll know that that wouldn't hang it up. I could have hung up the phone here right now that it's on speaker. Um, so once I hung, hung it up, I just had to click the speaker to actually turn it off. And I should mention, each of these interludes comes with an achievement, so this will come with here and there along the echo. The one before that will come with the entertainment. The one before that will come with limits and demonstrations. These are just named after the interludes that you're doing, much like the act achievements that are named after the corresponding acts. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, so on and so forth. Um, I was going to speed this part up, but I figured I might not just to be able to get that all out there because I do speed through these, trying to make not to make too long of a video as uh, a lot of these things in this game can be sped up. There's a lot you can do though, like if you're interested in hearing more of the storyline, the Easter eggs, like you can play through this phone conversation. In that first level, you could actually look at the museum. You could actually read those conversations in the second one, none of which I do. I'm just trying to grind through the achievements quickly and as efficiently as possible. So here I hang up the phone, but I had to click the speaker because I had turned that on. And then I said, yep, yeah, let's go. And that's interlude two in the achievement. Moving on to interlude four, this is another longer one. And it turns out the developers made a video that can go along with this if you link it up right. 
but you're going to be this person here that walks in, and I'm going to speed this all up. Or sorry, not the person that walks in. You're the person that's talking to them, though. And you're this sort of, uh, I don't want to say director, but you're kind of running the show here, just making sure everyone's doing their part. So we're going to bounce a lot between her and the host, which is in front of us. So we had to talk to the host here to get the show going. And I was just reading a little bit of it, but we're going to keep the show going. And then we're going to bounce around between some of the, the crew members to uh, help with the show. So after going through that bit of talk, you'll see over here there's a bookshelf behind us that we're going to click on. And again, I clicked, oh, what's this? And then we're going to pull out a book there, or um, a DVD, and then we give it to the crow there, and the show can keep going. Then we're going to go back over and check with the crow again. And we're moving back over to the TV show. And we can just run through this conversation. Then we're going over to these two guys to check in with them after that conversation. And then once again back to, and this is going to be like another half hour long thing. I'm just speeding through it just to kind of show you exactly where to go. But I just wanted to speed right through it. After going to them, then we're turning directly around going to the weather people that we're going to talk to briefly and then right back to the show again now we're going to actually talk with slow mo crow a bit as we're waiting on the show and we're kind of waiting for this call to finish up so you just got to watch that uh, conversation there and then we can talk to them again and skip through this You'll see the show is a blackout here. I click on everything in the room because we're kind of waiting on something to happen. So I just click on everything, waste some time. Don't know if you necessarily had to, but that's what I did. And then this person walks in. This is how we progress. Once they walk in, we talk to them. Then we can move back over to the show itself, as you can see here. And then we're talking to the crow again, and you'll hear static, and that's when we move over here. And that's how we complete the interlude. And that'll be the achievement in Pablo de Nada. And I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong for completing that interlude. But this can move us over to the fifth interlude. This one I'm really quickly going to speed through. Um, you can speed through the conversation. It'll take like 15 minutes or so. I literally just let it run and left the room. Don't need to click anything, but you could, I think, flip channels and things. I didn't whatsoever. I literally just let it run through the 15 minutes and I got the achievement and this will get you the achievement death of the hired man same as before named after the chat or the interlude that it's that the the title is from which is death of the hired man so you're completing death of the hired man if I didn't say it quite enough times death of the hired man one more time <laughs> but yeah just let it run through as you can see me doing and that's it. And this is the last thing to do in the game. If you complete it, you'll have completed all five acts, all five interludes, and now 100% the game. Hope these guides were helpful. Good luck. Let me know how hard it was for you to beat. And if you enjoyed it, I didn't listen to the storyline too, too much. But I mean, a lot of work went into it, not just programming, but all the conversations that were written for this. And like, there's just so much going on. So hope people enjoyed it. We'll catch you in another video, and I'll let the rest of this play through.